Apples to Apples is a party game originally published by Hasbro, and now published by Mattel. The object of the video game, is to win the most rounds by playing a red apple card, which typically features a noun, from one's hand, to best match that round's common green apple card, which consists of an adjective, as chosen by that round's judging gamer. The card game is developed for 4 to 10 gamers and played for 30 to 70 minutes. Apples to Apples was chosen by Mensa International in 1999 as a Mensa Select Prize winner, an award given to five games each year. The popularity of the video game led to an increased interest in similar card matching slash answer judging party card games. On September 8, 2007, Out of the Box Publishing sold the rights for Apples to Apples to Mattel. Dominion is a deck building card game created by Donald. Vaccarino and published by Rio Grande Games. Each player uses a separate deck of cards and draw their hands from their own decks, not those of others. Players use the cards in their hands to either perform actions or buy select cards from a common pool of card stacks. The player with the most victory points at the end wins. The game has a light medieval theme, with card names that reference pre-industrial, monarchical, and feudal social structures. Regarding the feel of the game, parallels are often drawn with collectible card games such as the popular Magic, The Gathering Vaccarino however, denies that Magic was the inspiration. Unlike that game, players of Dominion build their decks ad hoc as the game proceeds, rather than coming to the table with a pre-made deck. Dominion was the first game of its kind, but has spawned a whole genre of similar card-based games dubbed deck-building games, and retroactively applied as a descriptor to this game. When the game was publicly released at Spiel 2008 in Essen, Germany, in multiple languages, it was voted best game of the fair by the fair play polls. The next year in 2009, it won the prestigious Spiel des Jahres and Deutsche Spielerpreis awards. It was one of five winning games in American Mensa's 2009 mind game competition. The success of the game has led to a plethora of expansions. By 2016, more than 2.5 million copies of Dominion and its many expansions had been sold worldwide. Uno. The game was originally developed in 1971 by Merle Robbins in Reading, Ohio, a suburb of Cincinnati. When his family and friends began to play more and more, he spent 8,000 to a 5,000 copies of the game made. He sold it from his barbershop at first, and local businesses began to sell it as well. Robbins later sold the rights to Uno to a group of friends headed by Robert Tezik, a funeral parlor owner in Joliet, Illinois, for $50,000, plus royalties of 10 cents per game. Tezik formed International Games Incorporated to market Uno with offices behind his funeral parlor. The games were produced by Louis Saltzman of Saltzman Printers in Maywood, Illinois. In 1992, International Games became part of the Mattel family of companies. Currently, there are 108 Uno card games. Barbie Uno 2014, 25th Anniversary Uno, the sporting and children-themed packs. Ticket to Ride is a railway-themed German-style board game designed by Alan R. Moon. It was highlighted by Julian Delval and Surreal Dajin and released in 2004 by Days of Marvel. The board game is also called Zug am Zug, German, Les Aventuriers du Rail, French, Aventureros al Tren, Spanish, Lusias du Pochegu, Polish, and Menelipu, Finnish. The original version of the board game is played on a board portraying a train map of the United States and Southern Canada. Points are made based on the length of the claim paths, whoever completes the longest constant railway, and whether the gamer can link remote cities that are identified by drawing ticket cards. The game won the 2004 Spiel des Jahres, the Origins Award for Finest Board Video Game of 2004, the 2005 Diana Jones Award, the 2005 As Dors U de Lanay, and put second in the Schweitzer Spielepreis for Family Games. As of August 2008, over 750,000 copies of the game had been sold according to the publisher. Scheduled for release in 2020, Ticket to Trip, Stay at Home is released to mark the COVID-19 pandemic. Prior to Professor Plum Mississippi Scarlet and Colonel Mustard gathered on a game board to claim their first victim, wielding a revolver, a rope or a lead pipe, a British artist called Anthony Pratt, was seeing murder mystery scenarios unfold in European country estates, where he played piano. Long prior to that video game board became a global multi-million seller, and was inducted into the Toy Hall of Fame, Pratt was taking metal notes as visitors in these stylish homes, play acted dastardly crimes including skulking, streaming and falling dead to the floor. Years later on, throughout World War II, Pratt recreated those murder mystery parlor games, as a board game called Murder. His wife, Elva, assisted, creating the game board on their dining room table. In 1947, Pratt patented the game, 
and sold it to a UK-based board game maker named Waddington's and its American counterpart, Parker Brothers, now owned by Hasbro. However, because of post-war shortages the board game was not released until 1949, as Cluedo in England, and Clue in the United States. In both versions the idea is for gamers to collect clues to figure out the murder suspect, weapon in place. The board game happened in a Victorian mansion. The victim's name? Mr. Body. Catan, previously known as the Settlers of Catan, or simply Settlers, is a multiplayer board game designed by Klaus Torger, and first published in 1995 in Germany by Frank Cosmos Verlag, Cosmos, as die Siedler von Catan. Players take on the roles of settlers, each attempting to build and develop holdings while trading and acquiring resources. The game has actually sold more than 18 million copies worldwide. The players in the video game represent settlers developing settlements on the island of Catan. The game board, which represents the island, is made up of hexagonal tiles, hexes, of different land types, which are laid out randomly at the start of each video game. In 2016, editions of the game were released with a conventional set design board in this configuration, the hexes of which cannot be reorganized. In 1998 the first historical scenario pack was released, which allows players to reenact the building of the pyramids of Egypt, or the expansion of Alexander the Great's empire, using Catan game mechanics. A second scenario pack, for settlers involved the building of the Great Wall of China, and the Trojan War was released in 2001. Risk was developed by French film director Albert Lamarissa, and originally launched in 1957 as La Conquête du Monde, The Conquest of the World, in France. It was bought by Parker Brothers, and launched in 1959, with some adjustments to the guidelines as Danger, the Continental Game, then as Risk, the video game of global domination. Following the intro, the first brand new variation of Risk, in nearly 20 years was launched in 1986. After a limited special edition release in 1999 in France called Risk, Edition Napoleon and Ceremony of 200th Anniversary of the Napoleonic Period, a brand new edition called Risk, 2210 AD was published in 2001 by Hasbro's Avalon Hill Department. Beginning in 2002, Risk versions themed around media franchises, such as Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, Transformers and numerous others were released, sometimes as many as six editions per year. Originally called Criss Cross, the game, which was based on the crossword puzzle and anagrams, was developed by Alfred M. Butts, an architect, in 1931. It was redesigned, renamed as Scrabble, and marketed by James Bruneau in 1948. It was first sold in Great Britain, in 1954. Scrabble was later produced in many foreign languages, Braille, and Magnetic Editions, and continued to be one of the leading board and tile games in the United States. Tournaments have been held in the United States, since 1973. In 2005 Scrabulous, an unauthorized online version of Scrabble, was released, and two years later it debuted on the social networking site Facebook. The online version's immense popularity on the site soon caught the attention of Hasbro, owner of Scrabble's North American rights. Facing a lawsuit by Hasbro, Scrabulous creators Rajat Agarwala and Jayant Agarwala in 2008 released Wordscraper, a Scrabble-like game that allows players to design their own board, and later that year Facebook disabled Scrabulous for their North American users. The game, however, was available on its own website, though by late 2008 it was known as Lexilus. The history of Monopoly can be traced back to 1930, when American anti-monopolist Lizzie Maggie created a game which she hoped would explain the single tax theory of Henry George. It was intended as an educational tool to illustrate the negative aspects of concentrating land in private monopolies. She took out a patent in 1904. Her game, The Landlord's Game, was self-published beginning in 1906. Maggie created two sets of rules, an anti-monopolist set, in which all were rewarded when wealth was created, and a monopolist set, in which the goal was to create monopolies and crush opponents. Several variant board games, based on her concept, were developed from 1906 through the 1930s, they involved both the process of buying land, for its development and the sale of any undeveloped property. Cardboard houses were added, and rents increased, as they were added to a property. Maggie patented the game again in 1923, in 1936, Parker Brothers began licensing the game for sale outside the United States. In 1941, the British Secret Intelligence Service at John Waddington Limited, the licensed manufacturer of the game in the United Kingdom, create a special edition for World War II prisoners of war held by the Nazis. Hidden inside these games were maps, compasses, 
real money, and other objects useful for escaping. They were distributed to prisoners by fake charity organizations created by the British Secret Service. Economics professor Ralph Anspach published a game Anti-Monopoly in 1973 and was sued for trademark infringement by Parker Brothers in 1974. The case went to trial in 1976. Anspach won on appeals in 1979 as the Ninth Circuit Court determined that the trademark monopoly was generic and therefore unenforceable. The United States Supreme Court declined to hear the case, allowing the appellate court ruling to stand. This decision was overturned by the passage of Public Law 98-620 in 1984. With that law in place, Parker Brothers and its parent company, Hasbro, continue to hold valid trademarks for the game Monopoly. In 1991, Hasbro acquired Parker Brothers and thus Monopoly. Before the Hasbro acquisition, Parker Brothers acted as a publisher, only issuing two versions at a time, a regular and deluxe. Hasbro moved to create and license many other versions of Monopoly and sought public input in varying the game. A new wave of licensed products began in 1994, when Hasbro granted a license to US USAopoly to begin publishing a San Diego edition of Monopoly, which has since been followed by more than a hundred more licensees including Winning Moves Games in 1995 and Winning Solutions Incorporated in the United States. Chess is a two-player strategy board game played on a checkered board with 64 squares, arranged in an 8x8 square grid. Played by millions of people worldwide, chess is believed to be derived from the Indian game Chaturanga, sometime before the 7th century. Chaturanga is also the likely ancestor of the East Asian strategy games Xiangqi or Chinese chess, Jangi Korean chess, and Shogi Japanese chess. Chess reached Europe via Persia and Arabia by the 9th century, due to the Umaway conquest of Hispania, the pieces assumed their current properties in Spain in the late 15th century, and the modern rules were standardized in the 19th century. Play involves no hidden information. Each player begins with 16 pieces, one king, one queen, two rooks, two knights, two bishops, and eight pawns. Each piece type moves differently, with the most powerful being the queen and the least powerful the pawn. The objective is to checkmate the opponent's king by placing it under an inescapable threat of capture. To this end, a player's pieces are used to attack and capture the opponent's pieces, while supporting one another. During the game, play typically involves exchanging pieces for the opponent's similar pieces, and finding and engineering opportunities to trade advantageously or to get a better position. In addition to checkmate, a player wins the game if the opponent resigns, or, in a timed game, runs out of time. There are also several ways that a game can end in a draw.